All right, I, I, I know what you're saying, and I, and I feel bad about this, but I'm actually doing a favor for someone, so just bear with me a little bit. This is a Master Lock, obviously, big logo emblazoned right there. Master Lock Magnum, number one choice of, uh, well, cheapskates, perhaps. Anyway, this came from Expatriate, and he sent a letter with it. I'll just read that real quick. It says, Bill, a few years ago I bought the best lock available at my local big box hardware store. Before I could use it, it got misplaced, and I ended up using another lock for my storage shed. Recently, I found it, and I wanted to see if you could pick it. Feel free to destroy it in the most humiliating way. Well, I really shouldn't need to destroy it, I hope. Um, it is still brand new in the package. Um, lifetime guarantee. It has rated number 9 on the security scale. I think number 10 is probably... The hardest i really don't know maybe it's number one is the hardest uh, hard to tell well done locks all master locks they, they put a lot of effort into particularly the magnum series a lot of effort into using quality materials and this is no exception on here we have a uh, boron carbide shackle very very tough shackle odd shapes a little difficult to cut or get your croppers on it's still possible but they did make an effort to defeat that type of attack. Uh, beneath this rubber cover is a very tough laminated lock that's uh, riveted with steel rivets. I think it's up to, it's either six or eight steel rivets. So I guess what I'm trying to say is you're not going to, you know, you're not going to wail on this with a hammer and ultimately beat it open. They've gone a step further because this is the professional series. Uh, it's got a rubber cover on the outside to protect it against the weather. They even went to trouble to weather seal it on the top, even with this odd-sized, sh odd-shaped shackle to prevent weather from, or water and other contaminants from dripping down the shackle and entering the body of the lock, where we then kind of rust everything out. This rubber cover is really well designed, fits very tightly. It is removable. I don't know why. Maybe you want to recycle it, put it on another lock later. I don't know. Um, and then on the bottom, um, we have a little hinged lock a snapped door. There is a hole just in case water or condensation does get in there. It's got a place uh, to get out. When you snap it open, there's your lock. All right, let's, uh, I think I've impressed on you. It's a tough, tough lock, physically tough lock. Um, almost all master locks have the same core though which is usually a four pin core, no security pins. So they go to all this effort to put together a super nice, physically tough, well-designed, well-engineered, weatherproof lock, and then they put this junky core in there. Um, we do have a key right there. I'm not gonna bother to use it because usually you can pick these. These are great training locks. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's put it just like I would hold it in my hand, but I want the camera to focus good, so when I'm moving my hand back and forth, sometimes it doesn't work too good. All right, that ought to hold it. Move that little door out of the way. Let's find a tensioner. Try this guy. No, he's binding. He's probably not the right one. Let's try the thick one. He may be too... Oh, there we go. All right, that works, and he's not binding up, so perfect. All right, let's first try to single pin pick it. And I'm gonna to try to fit a nice thick pick in there. This is gonna be a medium hook. This one's from the Praxis kit, 25,000, seven inch thick. It's a wide keyway. Might as well use a nice, strong, uh, very stiff shift shafted pick. And it does fit and this is no different. It is four pins. So here's how I normally do it. Let me zoom in a little bit. This is how you pick a master lock. Um, I usually start with very heavy tension. Now most locks, high security locks, what I'll do is I'll insert my pick, get everything centered, and then I'll apply light tension, and then I'll slowly work my way out. Master locks, I do it the opposite. I apply very heavy tension, and then I start from the front, and I basically just shove the pick, I call it bullying. I just shove the pick back until it hits a speed bump. That's the binding pin. And then I force him up until I hear a click. And there we go. And then I shove him back until I hit another speed bump. And then I force him up. And then I shove him back a little further and hit the last one. And there you go. Open. That's, that's the hard way to get into these guys. I'm going to use the same tensioner. Let's try something else. Another one of my favorite ways to get in here. And that would be, let's find a Bogota here. Let's try Bogota. One of the most popular of all time. 
Okay, this one's a little different. I don't apply heavy tension. I apply light or even moderate tension and then start raking back and forth and just you're going to work those pins into place. So light tension and then just kind of work that pick back and forth until it opens it up. God, this is so easy. All right, fellas. I don't think that it's necessary for me to destroy this lock in the most humiliating way. I think Master Lock did a pretty good job themselves of humiliating themselves and their company by going to all this effort and then saving a few pennies by putting that piece of marshmallow core in there. So no further humiliation necessary. Fellas, don't use these. Don't Please don't use these to secure anything valuable. These are great training locks. They'll teach you how to figure out which pins are binding and how to rake and how to use different tools, but they are not to lock up bicycles or sheds or anything else. As a training lock, it does come with a lifetime guarantee, so you can continue to practice on this for a long time, but God, don't use it to lock anything up. Enough said. Humiliation, I think I've driven that point home. Appreciate your time, guys. Stay safe. Stay legal. I'm going to have to look around and try to find a 10.